Hi, I'm Semben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Addendum to Current of Inductor, an answer to riddle on an internet tutorial. There is a reference here to an earlier video, which is uh, the basic answer and discussion and explanation of the waveforms. And here is the link, and I'm going also to put this link at the page of this uh, video that you are now watching on YouTube. The original riddle was related to the internet tutorial named Inductor, which can be found at the website of Electronics Tutorials, given here. The riddle was related to waveforms which are presented and explained. Here we have an inductor, there is a switch, voltage source, this switch is turned on and then later on turned off. And as explained, during the turn on we have a voltage coming up here, the input, and according to the explanation provided by the tutorial, the current is going up continuously at a constant slope, and then it stabilizes to a given value, and then it goes down as the switch is open, turned off, it goes down also at a constant slope. And then shown here is the voltage of the inductor, which see a triangular waveform at the leading edge and here also at the trailing. The tutorial provides an explanation of these waveforms, how they are generated, which I'm not going over it, and the questions that I've posed were as follows. How many errors can you spot in this tutorial assuming L over R is smaller than T on, and how many errors can you spot in this tutorial assuming that L over R is larger than T on? T on is this on time of the switch. My analysis shows that there are many, many errors in the explanation in the tutorials. And here are some, which I'm not going through all of them here. For example, we start with the fact that if the current is indeed coming to a constant value, this would imply that there is a resistance in the circuit, because otherwise the current would be going up and up, and if it comes to a certain value here, which is determined by a uh, resistor, then you actually have to add this representation here of a resistor. And then you have a first order differential equation, which implies that the current will go up exponentially and not like this. At the same time, the voltage on the inductor itself is going to be also starting with the step and then going down exponentially. And more importantly, when you turn off the switch and you interrupt the current, actually there is a di dt equal to infinity because in the model analysis, you assume that this interruption is instantaneous. Then you are going to have a very steep change in voltage. In fact, it's going to be negative like this. This is the voltage across the inductor, going to be here minus and here plus. And the current will shoot down very quickly to zero, uh, all the energy will be dissipated. So this would be my analysis of the operation of this circuit as shown in this tutorial. So this is a answer to the riddle which I've posted in my YouTube channel. And the author replied, and here is his uh, reply, which disagree what I am saying. So I'm going now to analyze this reply and see what we can make out of it. So let's start with this first section. It says, sorry, but this video and other videos, apparently other people also alerted the author to the problem in his explanation. Sorry, but this video and other videos to discredit the tutorial is nonsense. The circuit clearly shows the characteristics of a pure inductor. There is no serious resistance, which you have decided to add for your convenience. Therefore, there is no L over R, a time constant quantity. So your analysis is flawed. Well, the fact that the current comes to a certain value and stops at this value implies that there is a resistance. You can't escape from it. Without a resistance, the current will be going up and up and up with no end. So if it comes to a certain value, then obviously you do have a resistor. And if you have a resistor, then the 
rise is exponential. Then it says, at the initial closing of the switch, T equal to zero, electric current starts to flow through the coil, thereby producing a magnetic field. The growth in current through the coil from zero to I max, whatever it is, is not an instantaneous step shown in the middle graph as the incremental change in the current through the coil causes an EMF to be induced in itself because of this charging magnetic field, which opposes and controls the rate of current change, Lenz law. And then the self-induced EMF is of opposite polarity to the applied voltage from the battery, hence the negative sign in the equation demonstrated by the bottom graph here. So it sticks to this waveform generated by this back EMF. Now, if according to the author, there is no resistance here, and you connect a battery to an inductor, then the voltage on the inductor equals to the voltage of the battery. You cannot have anything else because these are connected together you're imposing a voltage on the inductor, and that is what you see on the inductor. This is if you don't have a resistor, according to the author. So this is nonsense, because if you connect here, you see this voltage. And then, when you open the switch, you're going to see this shoot down, the very high peak, and the current, as I've shown earlier, will go immediately to zero. So. This argument does, doesn't hold any water here. And then it says, eventually, steady state conditions apply. The coil acts as a simple piece of wire. Maximum current flows from the battery source and the self-induced back EMF decreases to zero. What is maximum current flows from the battery source? All shown graphically with no resistance. Opening the switch has the reverse effect, then the tutorial and explanation is valid and correct with no added resistance. Well, I don't understand what the coil acts as a simple piece of wire. Does it have a resistance? Does it not have a resistance? It's impossible to have a waveform like this if there is no resistance. And if there is a resistance, it's going to be exponential increase of the current. And then it says that maximum current flows from the battery source. What, what, what is maximum current? Well, what does it mean? This is garbage. And then it says opening the switch has the reverse effect. Well, then the tutorial and explanation is valid and correct with no added resistance. Well, he says that when you open the switch, and if there is a current, you'll see a decrease like this. This is, of course, a major error. If you interrupt the current, you're going to have a voltage spike, and the current will go down immediately. So, for those still confused, and as a lesson to the author of this tutorial, Mr. Wayne Starr, here is a simulation of the situation from which one can see very clearly what is happening. So I have here a voltage source, one volt. I have a switch. Here is the excitation of the control of the switch, which is a square wave pulse, the inductor, and a resistor. I'm running now the simulation with two cases, with still effectively no resistance. I've changed this to one micro ohm, which represents a case without resistance, and then I've changed it to 10 ohms just to see what happens in the actual case. So here are the results. This is for one micro ohm, that is no resistance you might say. We see here the control pulse of the switch. We see the current going up, and obviously if the pulse would be longer, it would be going up and up to a very high value limited by, by the way, by the one micro ohm, which we don't see here. And then we see the voltage on this assembly here, the L plus R, which of course 
when connected to the voltage source will be one volt and then we see when the control goes back to zero that is the switch opens disconnects we see this voltage spike this is a zoom plot we see the current going down very quickly and here this is the same thing except that uh, the scale here is going to very high voltage and you see that uh, it goes uh, down to minus 900 kilovolt and that, that's not the end of it I've just chopped it here so clearly when you do not have a resistor current will not stabilize the voltage on the assembly will be the input voltage and at the disconnect you're going to have this spike which causes the current to go very quickly back to zero due to the dissipation of the power in practice this will be dissipated into the circuitry around or by arcing and by the way this spike is the reason that we do have to protect switches when they are open and if they are feeding a coil this is the reason if you do not protect the switch then you're going to see this very high voltage will cause arcing and if this would be a semiconductor it could damage it and cause a breakdown so this is all very well known this is nothing new here except for the author which apparently has not studied this uh, carefully now what about the case of a resistor that is there is a resistor 10 ohm in this case obviously there be an exponential increase and if the time constant is such that it will reach steady state so to speak then the value here will be of course the voltage divided by the resistance so it will be 100 milliohm here it is 100 milliohm and then again when you open the switch disconnect the current interrupt it you get this negative spike again which will cause the current in the inductor to go very quickly to zero so this is very well known there's nothing new about it except for what is explained in this uh, tutorial which we understand is nonsense wrong and shows a lack of understanding of very basic principles in electrical engineering now the original tutorial includes many chapters and I was referring in this riddle and answer here to the introduction and then I just went to the next page and here what I found in the next page of this same tutorial there are two examples here talks about a coil which is air wound air coil has 500 turns produce a magnetic flux of 10 milliweber when passing a DC current of 10 amp and it is required to calculate the self inductance of the coil in millihenry well the equation is provided n is known phi flux is known i is known then obviously we can calculate the inductance 500 millihenry that's fine now comes example number two calculate the value of the self-induced emf produced in the same coil after a time of 10 milliseconds we have a coil there is a dc in it of 10 amp and there is a question here which is kind of very strange what is the back EMF? Now back EMF is related to DIDT. If this is DC, there is no DIDT. But here is the answer that the author is providing. He's saying that there is a 10 amp and after 10 milliseconds, then this value here will be 10 over 10 milliseconds this is completely nonsense doesn't matter the time once you have DC there is no change so how can you say that this is 10 over 
10 amp over 10 millisecond. And obviously if there's no change, there's no voltage, it is very basic knowledge that if you have a DC through an inductor, there's no back EMF. So this is really very strange and very difficult to comprehend that a person who has no knowledge of electrical engineering would dare to write a tutorial. This is really unacceptable. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest. Thank you very much.